Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, I'm going to record this in a way that I can lightly edit it and put it on YouTube. And if you're watching on Locals, it will be unedited. So also, if you're on Locals, I'm going to swear a lot in this video. If you want to see the clean version, go to YouTube. Big Mama YouTube can, can you can deal with it over there. I'm, I'm pissed off. I, and, and, I'm really, really pissed off. Um, and and part of it, I, I think the big the big reason is is this. You know, for the last, I don't know, four or five, six years, we've been told women are strong, women are empowering, women are brave, women are stunning, they can do anything. Okay, we can have our discussion and our arguments about that. But instead of just propping women up to an unrealistic elevation, they also in the same time have decided to say men are stupid. Young, especially young men are stupid and they're part of the patriarchy and they're part of the problem. And this critical race theory where uh, white kids are, are, are inherently have power and they're made fun of and they're put down and the movies today, everything that's on them. And when one of these young men snaps and goes out to a public school and decides to pull out uh, armament and open fire on young children, they circle right back around and they say, hey, we have a y angry young male problem today and we, we need to look at this. And they look and think about it and they talk about it. Do they, are they talking and thinking and looking at ways to help these young men, to find them a way to better their lives, to maybe get them out of the problems? No, they just wanna blame them for being young and angry and doing heinous, bad, unthinkable things and then in a week or two, they turn right back around and they'll release the next movie or the next commercial or the next TV show saying that men are bad and stupid and everything else. And they keep on keeping on. They stick their head in the sand. And is it any wonder that when you're telling young men that they're worthless and they're part of the problem and they're systemic this and they're problematic that and they're toxic if they want to be masculine or strong. And then when they decide, okay, I'll play your game. I'll decide to be a little bit effeminate or maybe they just are a little bit effeminate and they don't project these strong masculine traits and then they get made fun of in school. Is there any wonder that all of them feel lost, confused and angry and one of them snaps, does something horrid and, and somehow we're surprised and we're going to blame them, but we're not going to help them. Now, for those of you that are overseas, not in the United States, um, please understand that there was a, a, a school incident in which a young man, 18 years old, decided to take a long distance hole puncher and uh, take out young school kids, a large number of them. And it is a tragedy. But, but the problem is too many people wanna talk about Okay, let's take the weapons away. Let's take the way that the the method that he used to do this. Let's let's just ban them and get rid of them. But that's not the answer because we also know they can construct devices out of pressure cooking pots like they did in Boston and do a lot of damage. They can take trucks filled with fertilizer, pull them up to a a building and blow half of it up. Or they can take a truck or a, an SUV and drive it through a parade of children and the elderly. It's not the method of the madness. It's the fact that the madness happens and you have to go to the root cause. But they don't want to do that. They just want to blame men. And, and all of a sudden, this is on all young men. This is on all men. This is on all angry people. Okay, so I'm going to try to read this again so I, because I do want you guys on YouTube to be able to see this, but it, this is a delicate subject that you, I have to dance around on YouTube. Anyway, in Uvalde, Texas, a young man entered a school undisrupted through an unlocked door, pulled out a weapon, and opened fire. I'm going to read through this and then I'll move on to my thoughts about it. 
Uh, I'm sure many of you here in the United States already know about it. And there's constantly breaking news. So that will change. Texas officials said on Thursday afternoon that the uh, school incident was inside Uvalde Elementary School for one hour before taken down by a U.S. Border Patrol tactical team member and is believed to have entered the school unobstructed without confronting a school resource officer, as previous statements suggested. Um, to give you a long story short, this young man was being chased by the police. He crashed his truck, and this is everything I've gotten so far. It may change. Uh, I'm trying to get this as accurate as I can. Uh, his truck crashed. He grabbed the weapon. He ran in through one of the doors inside the school, and the police formed a perimeter and they did not chase in after him because they had been fired upon. This is also going to go to the whole bad times make weak men because when you leave police officers that are scared or afraid to take a risk and to go in and stop somebody that may be actively harming children because they're worried about their own safety, this is when you need the heroes. This is when you need the strong men. And a, and a Border Patrol tactical team member said, screw this, I'm going to go in. Uh, the more that comes out about this story, the more you realize that everybody messed up. The, the police departments did. It's just a mess. Uh, this Victor Escalon, Texas Department of Public Safety, Regional Director for South Texas, said Thursday that uh, the head that did this, and I don't read their names because I do not want to give any publicity to these shit bags that do this. Uh, the alleged school uh, person that harmed people was inside for one hour before being ended. Uh, he allegedly ended the lives of 19 students and two teachers during the incident on Tuesday. Escalon said, also said that the officers who first arrived on the scene did not make entry initially because of the fire that they were receiving from him, adding that the U.S. Border Patrol tactical team member arrived one hour later. Approximately an hour uh, later, U.S. Border Patrol tactical teams arrived, but from what I've heard, it's also it was just one, one member of the team that went in uh, that made entry into the school and ended the person that was ending other people. Uh, he entered the school undisrupted without being confronted by a school district police officer after crashing his vehicle and also entered through a door that appears to have been unlocked. And the uh, school district police officer confronted him uh, who was making entry. That report was not accurate. He walked in undisrupted. Uh, so he went from his grandmother's house where he ended the grandmother entered the school, drove away, crashed, entered the school without meeting any uh, interruptions, and the police set up a perimeter. So in the meantime, he took fire uh, uh, upon and ended 19 lives in one classroom. Now, this is a, this is a, an angry young man problem, and I'm going to read through kind of his issues but it's also a failure of the police department. It's also a failure of the, the security that was at the school. Um, it was also the fault of having a non-primary door to the school being unlocked. There were lots of problems here. And whether you agree or disagree that you should be able to have these kind of armaments uh, here in the United States, it is our second amendment, right? And out of 300 and 40 or 30 or 50, however many million people there are, when somebody goes crazy, yes, they can do things like this. But just because their mode of hurting or ending other people happens to be this type of a armament doesn't mean that it wouldn't happen in some other way. But the whole point is that this young man got to this point where he was embarrassed, he didn't have any friends, uh, he was teased, he was bullied, and, and he got in a very bad place. And my hope is by talking about these subjects with you guys, because many of you may not have friends or many of you may not be able to date or you get picked on by women, 
you can realize that there's a whole other world out there and a whole other group of people that will appreciate you and love you and care for you in many different ways, whether it's friends, whether it's family. This, Of course, this young man was a, a single uh, or a, only had a single a, a parent in his life, his mother, and she had illicit substance problems. And so there's, there's a lot that, that ends credence to this story. And I wasn't going to do a video on this until I saw this uh, article by Maureen Callahan. Our greatest public health crisis, the angry young American male. It's kind of funny that we never talk about, you know, health crisis and young American males until an incident like this happens. And then they say, wow, we have a young man, angry young man problem. We need to correct these young men. We need to get them help. But they talk about this for about a hot minute and then they go right back to saying that men are bad, men are toxic, that, um, you know, have, ha having no father in the home doesn't matter. And this will stick around for another week and then it'll be right back to men bad, men poison. But her take on this, of course it happened again. How could it not? After every one of these school incidents, the latest always seeming more horrific and unthinkable than the last we vow Never again, yet we do nothing. Uh, they say the weapon control is necessary. Of course, the idea that someone just old enough to vote can legally purchase this is insane. But lawmakers, public health officials, and Americans ourselves have a greater, more complicated crisis to address, which I agree with. Again, if you're crazy and you want to hurt people, you will find a way. Just because they chose this particular manner in which to do it doesn't you can take away the instrument, but it doesn't take away the problem. Uh, just ask the UK and their knife problem currently, or Sweden and their things going boom problem. She says, we are continuing to create, create more than 20 years after uh, the Columbine school incident, young male problematic men who target school kids, only in America. No other country suffers this sickness, but us, America, land of milk and honey, born here, you're born on third base, yet we are cultivating a cohort, young men hellbent on ending our children. Let me pause you there again and saying, well, we, we're, we supposedly have a great, wonderful country here. Why is it that we're having this problem? Well, it's because we have all these armaments. Yes, well, ask Canada and New Zealand and Australia and the UK if they wish there. They still had their armaments when their governments come to lock them down and tell them that, that they're take, losing their freedoms. Yes, we have many freedoms here. Yes, we have the right to arm ourselves. Yes, it does come with costs and risks. But again, instead of looking at the beginning of why are young men having these problems? Why are young men getting in this place? Why are young men turning to do awful evil things like this? Why is this happening? No, they just say, we need to take the instruments of death out of their hands. That's not going to fix the problem, nor is it going to fix the men causing the problems. They say there is a malignancy in our culture, and like every untreated cancer, it continues to metastasize. Uh, these large uh, incidents aren't just commonplace, they're frequent. They're no longer a bug in our country, but a feature. Less than two weeks ago, uh, a person did a similar thing, ending the lives of 10 people in a Buffalo supermarket. Who even remembers that now after this one? But you know what's interesting? She doesn't go on to mention the black male that drove an SUV through a parade and put, I don't know, 60 people in the hospital or something and ended half a dozen lives. That was yeeted because he was not a young man. I think he was in his 30s. He, that was yeeted out of the news in two days, three days. Why? Didn't fit the narrative. What's the narrative? Well, it's got to be we can only talk about one color skin doing these incidents. What about the New York City uh, subway incident? That man was 60 year, years old and he was also black. Yeeted out of the news in, in a couple days. And you notice though, we don't talk about that. Why? Because it's an area with very strict uh, laws about carrying armaments. We don't talk about the Buffalo one quite as much, but we did some. But here's a guy that took an SUV and went down through a parade. That didn't in, in, include an armament. 
except if you want to count an SUV. And he did a lot more damage or, or similar damage to this incident, less lives lost, but more people affected. Why didn't we talk about that? Because it didn't have the armament and it didn't have the color of skin. And if we really cared about the young men in crisis in this country, why do we not talk about the men that do not have fathers, about the men in some of the minority areas in Chicago that week on weekends end more people than this incident did with the same type of weapon in the same manner? We never talk about that. Why? Do that? those young black men's lives not matter just as much as all these kids in this classroom do? These kids were younger, but a life is a life is a life. Why are we not talking about that? It doesn't fit the narrative. They can't use it as a political tool, and so they don't want to talk about it, and it falls right off the radar. So the truth is these people don't care about young men. They don't care about young black men or white men or anybody else. They just want to be able to use this to try to gain political points on their opposition. Because if they really did care, there'd be a whole lot more talk about Chicago and L.A. and Detroit and Philadelphia and Philly and in Baltimore and in Washington, D.C. They only want to talk about certain incidents that fit the narrative. Um, I'm not going to read the rest of this. They just go on basically, but it's all about what the young man was carrying. So they like to say it's all about young men and their problems. I mean, I'll see if I can grab parts of this out that are trying to make their point that I'm going to may or may not agree or disagree with. They say, we are the greatest nation in the world and we are failing our children like no other. To read the description of America's latest uh, it incident is to recognize an all too familiar profile, young, male, angry, notably disturbed witness, uh, witnesses piercing together, piecing together the clues, including online threats made openly, not on the dark web, only after the fact, an obsession with armaments, uh, anger, harm, and first person video games. Oh, we're really going to get into video games on this one. That's been debunked since the nineties an estrangement from at least one parent, the father, refusal to attend school, anger towards girls and women, antisocial. He has no sense of belonging to family, to school, to community, and thus retreats online where rage and veiled threats are unleashed to a like-minded cohort, re reinforcing a sense of validating the thirst for what uh, these people see as vengeance. So they're going to blame it on the internet and other young men like this. If there are so many young men that are so angry in communities talking like this and they're getting reinforcement and they're getting uh, congratulations for doing this, do you blame the online forum where they meet? No. Do you blame the method in which they choose to hurt other people? No. You blame the young men. But how did these young men get like this? I've said many times that if you were to kick a puppy right before it ate, or you were to kick a puppy and then tell, tell, tell it that you love it, that puppy would learn very quickly that when it eats it, it should expect pain beforehand or after that puppy will learn that the word love actually means pain. And so when it tries to fit in with society, it's not going to work out very well. It's going to be out of sorts. It's going to be broken. And when you're taking young men and raising them in a home with a single mother who may not be able to understand the problems a young man may face, she, she likely does not know how to teach him stoicism and ways to work through problems like this in a healthy manner. He doesn't have a, a, a father and, and other real-world male friends to do activities with. They fall further and further into isolation, and they feel alone. And when they feel alone and angry 
and they feel like they're the out, on the outside of society, many of them try to destroy that society that has hurt them so. And in many ways, as much as it, we can call someone like this a monster and evil and heinous, it's also Frankenstein's monster and that it was made, and it was made by Dr. Frankenstein. Frankenstein, of course, being society today. Society makes these men like this. Why is it happening more often? Not because of the way that the, the, the item that they choose to harm others with. It's because we're throwing young men under the bus over and over again. We're telling young men they're toxic and poisonous and the root of all evil and that you have inherent guilt because of the color of your skin. We're telling you know, young black men or, or, or black people in general that the whites hold you back and that they hate you. And when you tell somebody that and they decide, and again, it, it's all in the messaging, when that young black man believes that and then he lashes out against the community and maybe he hurts somebody that's a white person or maybe the white person hurts somebody that's a black person. And instead of saying, hey, that one individual hurt me, what are they told by the news? What are they told by the media? All men will hurt you, women. Black men will hurt white men. White men will hurt black men. White men hold, it's all just poison. And it's poison poured into the minds of young adults. And when you're older like me, and you, you've kind of seen the way the real world works, you know that the vast majority of people you meet are good, kind-hearted, love all colors and creeds and shapes and sizes type people. But there are some people that are going to fall into the, into the corners and into the cracks of the woodwork. And when they come out of that, they come out of it like this young man did. They say the lone wolf is no more. Not since the internet. Now, any disaffected young man can become, with anonymous encouragement and advice, an ending machine. And they show various pictures of previous people. But you notice something. The most recent, uh, this is a young white guy. This is an Asian gentleman. The one that just perpetrated the latest one is appears to be um, Latino, at least by his name and by his looks. Uh, if he isn't, uh, I, I apologize, but he seems to be. The subway uh, guy that did everything on the sub subway was a 60-year-old black male. The guy that took the SUV and drove through the parade of people was a 30-something, I think, black male. It's not about the color of your skin. It's not even about your age because you had 60-year-old, a 30-year-old, and two young men. But it's always men. Why? Because it's usually the men that are pushed out of society and do not have good mental and good uh, places to go and get help to find out that they're not alone and that they don't need to go through this. But again, instead of looking at the root causes, we're just going to point the fingers at the end result and say this is the problem. Of course, they say misogyny. They had to get that in here is too tame a word for what this group espouses. So now you notice something right here. They're blaming the group. What is this group? It's the invisible, unknown group of men that are just like this guy online. Who is that? We don't know. Are there angry young men that get into these corners of the web and talk trash and do awful things? You're damn right there are. And, and we, need to find, we, we, we need to find out why they're there. By closing down the groups, if you go to Reddit or if you go to 4chan or any of these others, and you close down the group, just like cockroaches when you turn on the lights, they're going to find someplace else to go. You need to find out where they're talking. And maybe for a change, instead of shutting it down, maybe listen. Maybe listen to what they're upset about. Maybe listen to their problems. Maybe figure out what's ticking in their heads that put them in such a bad place. Only then are we going to make this kind of thing stop. But they don't. They start name-calling. 
and finger pointing and blaming these groups of men. Now, I don't think all these men are horrible, heinous people, but if you act upon it, you do something like this, then you are. Let's be clear about that. And if, if uh, your life is ended because you're this person doing these harmful things, I, I'm fine with it. I'd much rather them get help and find out what caused this so we can backtrack and correct it before it gets started. But if you get to the point of actually harming others, you, you should be ended. And again, they say among the most harmful, uh, recent harmful subcultures to coalesce online are the so-called incels. Uh, the portmanchu, portmanchu for involuntary celibates deemed as a deemed a specific threat by the U.S. Secret Service in a study pu published last March. Are these young men upset? Yep. Do they say some pretty heinous things? Yep. Are they angry and lashing out? Yep. Are all of them a th a specific threat? No. I've had some. Many of you guys email me. And you said, hey, man, yeah, I'm in Salem, but I found a positive outlook or I'm focusing on work or life. I'm focusing on better things. They're not a harmful. But again, we, we keep wanting a group to point to, uh, to try to demonize men instead of finding the reason why this is happening in the first place. Again, they continue on. So they say, a misogyny is too tame a word for what this group espouses. Blaming women as they do for denying them sex and love. They advocate... Uh, the struggle snuggle, you know, unwanted attention on women, the elimination of women's rights and uh, large group life ending events. Do all of them? Nope. Do a lot of them? No. I'd say yes, there are a few that go down the rabbit hole. And yes, some of them do talk about this. But by focusing on these very small groups and trying to point fingers and blame men, they are not stepping back and realizing that all men, or at least most men, but a lot of them are struggling right now. They're struggling from lack of, of positive role models. They're struggling from help. They're struggling from no men in their lives. They're struggling from not getting any assistance. And what we're doing is we're looking at the end result and saying that puppy does not fit in with the rest of society. We need to terminate that puppy. Even though it's really not the puppy's fault. It's the way the puppy was raised and trained. Well, it's the same thing with these young men. They're being raised, told they're bad and poisonous, and they have no masculine men in their lives. They say it's all too easy for a boy or young man whose frontal cortex is not mature until 25 to plug into a self-selecting group online and share gruesome fantasies, hear or issue encouragements to do lots of harmful things, Ideations that some may consider meaningless and others imperative. It's time to stop shit posting and time to make a real life effort post. The Buffalo uh, Ender posted in December, I will carry out an attack. The membrane between the virtual world and the physical one has all but collapsed online threats and persevering over uh, harmful actions, especially by young men. These need to be treated as real. I agree. Let's treat them at the core, the mind. And how do you fix that mind? By family, by having a nuclear family with a father involved, positive male role models, not telling men that they're poisonous and dangerous and the root of all problems from the age of eight or five. The, and, and, and here's the deal with this guy, okay? He was bullied for his stutter for wearing black eyeliner. Uh, the suspected uh, Uvalde, Texas school person has been bullied for wearing black eyeliner and having a stutter. He was identified by officials as the, the suspect who ended 19 lives um, and who was ended then himself. Uh, he was identified by one of his friends. They were told that uh, he posted a picture of himself on social media wearing eyeliner. He faced an array of harsh comments. Now, again, I'm not saying the harsh comments are fair. If this young man wants to do it, let him do it. But let's face it, bullying is a part of life. 
I was bullied a lot as a young man. I was short. I was skinny, at least my first couple of years of high school till I got into sports. I never thought about my feelings got hurt, yes, but I never felt on, about lashing out at people. Why? Because I had a father and a mother, and both of them were very loving and were there for me. And I could go home and say, oh, I'm kind of ticked off or sad or angry or whatever because this happened. And I had a father that said, let's go out and toss the ball. We'll talk about it. And after that talk with my father, I felt okay. about. I felt better about things. I felt somebody understood me and had my back. He didn't have that. So do I blame him for what he did? Yes. Do I blame him for the condition he was in to where he felt like he had to do that? No, that, that's, I mean, partially, yes, but a lot of it is society and not caring for him. Do we really have a problem with angry young men or do we have a problem with a society that is angry at young men, that craps on young men, that shits on them, that gives them a hard time? The Washington Post also spoke to other friends and family members who said that he faced more bullying in middle school for speaking with a stutter. He would get bullied hard, bullied by a lot of people over social media, over gaming, over everything. And again, that's not okay. But you can't stop other people from doing that to you. It'd be great if we were in a world where we could stop all bullying and stop that stuff from happening. It's not going to happen. No matter how many speech laws and taking away First Amendment rights and how much you make it a crime, people will still do it. The only way you can protect yourself against this kind of thing is to shore up your defenses, is to, to be able to handle and, and weather this type of attack against you. Again, I know, I, I did get teased quite a lot when I was younger. Uh, they say, uh, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, he, the, the, um, his cousin, she, uh, his cousin uh, Mia told the Washington Post uh, that he didn't feel comfortable at school anymore. He wasn't very much of a social per person after being bullied for the, for the stutter. Another friend said that uh, he showed up to, to a park with a cut on his face. The guy ended up revealing that he cut himself for fun. No one, no one that is healthy cuts themselves for fun. That's someone with a lot of mental angst, a lot of mental issues. And usually they do that as a release for pain. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but I've talked to uh, women that I, I've seen scars on that were friends of mine, one of them. And I asked her and she just said, yeah, I used to cut myself. And when I asked her why, she said it was a, a way to feel something other than the pain that I was used to. It was a different type of pain, a fresh pain, a way to take my mind off it, a way to get attention, a cry for help. It was multiple things. But to do it on your face, you're not trying to hide it. You're putting it all out there. Did they get him mental health? No. Did they get him into counseling? No. Did they put any warnings out there about him? No. So they left him to his problems until he did this heinous activity. You've got a young man that was crying out for help. He didn't have the support of a father non-existent in his life, apparently. He didn't have the support of a mother. She used illicit substances. He was kind of left in the care of his grandmother, it seems. So what happens when you're a young man and you have no father, a mother that would rather party or do her thing than spend time with you, and you're dumped off in grandma's lap? You don't have any friends. You try to maybe I don't fit in by doing the eyeliner thing or wearing black or trying to fit in with a goth group or whatever it was, and you're laughed and made fun of. You show that you're going through mental anguish and you don't. no one offers you help. No one gets you into counseling. You're just left alone to, and, and the only people that maybe you connect with are very bad groups online. And you end up going down into the spiral. For this whole incident, of course, this young man is to blame first and foremost. He didn't go seeking help. He went out 
and he, he ended the lives of 19 people. So this is entirely his fault. But if we want to rewind a little bit and say, what could we have done better? Yes, you can say we could have secured the school better. Yes, we could have had the police act with a little bit more testicular fortitude, a little more brav bravado, and go out and um, stop this young man, maybe end him before he ended the young kids in that school. But let's keep rewinding. When he cut himself, we could have tried to get him some help. Even if you have to, to turn him into authorities so that he can be locked up so he can't hurt other people while you get him help. But let's rewind before that. Yes, it would have been nice to stop the bullying, but that's never going to stop. So he needs to thicken his skin. He needs to be able to handle that kind of stuff. And not to man up, not to man up, but to understand that it's going to happen. Here are some outlets. Here are some people you can talk to. Let's rewind from there. What, what could help him with those kind of things, with thickening his skin, finding a positive masculine way to work through this? A father, a nuclear family, family that cared about him. You know, a society where maybe he had a chance to make some friends. Maybe uh, more positive groups out there that he could have interacted with to maybe help him out of this funk. There's a lot out there that could be done. But if you start rewinding it all the way back to the initial problems, whether it's the, the initial problem for this young man, for the young men in Chicago that are ending each other on the weekends, for the young men that are self-deleting, for the young men that are growing up without aim, it all boils down to having a good family, good friends, good education, a good support system. And when a young person is growing and they have the right people in their lives to guide them in a positive direction, it doesn't mean that they're going to be problem free. They may have a lot of problems. Let's just say Joker hasn't always avoided a jail cell. <laughs> I've been in a jail cell before. I'm, I haven't always been a saint. When I was a young man, I had my problems. But I also had a lot of positive reinforcement that helped me see the error of my ways. Came from family. Came from friends. Came from good people. They kind of said, hey, you realize you goofed up. Yep. All right. Well, not going to do that again, are you? Nope. Let's get it back on track. We all make mistakes. But when there's no one to correct the lives of these young men, no one to correct the, the direction in which they head in, and they head down a dark path, don't be surprised when they come out and they, they come out as a monster. But understand that it was society and the lack of a father and a lack of, of positive influences that is creating this society or, or that is creating these monsters. And then when the monster wakes up and starts doing the awful monster things that they do, instead of blaming the monster solely alone, Let's maybe look at what built the monster and see if we can fix that. Because if we can do that, if we can help these young men instead of at the age of 18, but at the age of three and five and seven and nine and 12, by the time that they get up to the age of 18, they know what's right and wrong. They know what they need to survive and to strive and to do well. But the way we're doing this now, it's not the right way. It's not the right way. Um, Guys, if you like my work, please support me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. I'm going to try to do more news stories like this. A lot of times you guys don't know what I'm doing on YouTube because I do a lot more over on YouTube or um, on, on Locals. And I've stopped doing as much on Rumble because as much as Rumble says, uh, they don't remove any of my videos, but a lot of them will not be monetized either um, because I guess my topics they don't care for. So, you know, that, that leaves the only place I can really do my free work or my best work um, without fear of any ty type of reprisal over on Locals. And it, some of the stuff I'm going to make for supporters only, other stuff I make available for all members. Um, so kind of think of it as I'm not taking anything away from you. I'm just giving you more for being a supporter over on Locals. Uh, I'll leave it there, guys. Uh, remember, you know, help, help these young men in any way, shape, or form you can. Be a positive role model if you can. It doesn't mean it's always going to work. 
I have two nephews that fell to the wayside. I tried, but at least try, at least do what we can to be out there for these young men. Because if we don't, um, I think the hard times are just beginning for both those young men and the people they decide to go out and harm or the people that may need to interact with them or be part of their lives uh, for the rest of their life. So, all right, we'll see you next time, guys. Thank you.